Hello, and welcome to Music One. Uh, I didn't call this Guitar One or Piano One because in order to do uh, music, there has to be a basic understanding of what's going on in the background, uh, what's going on uh, on that sheet of paper that you're looking at, and within the song, and what makes music sound the way that it sounds. So we're gonna start off at an extremely basic level because I find that a lot of people that want to learn, they can sing uh, and they, they love to sing and, and have music and, and they want to play music, but they've never had any instruction at all. Uh, so you can't just start out um, with an absolute just, okay, here, this is how you play guitar because there has to be a little bit of background. So we're gonna start off with what is music structure. Uh, how is music structured? We all understand what music is uh, because we like it, right? It sounds good. Um, so we're going to start off with the music structure, the things that you're going to see on a piece of paper that are going to help you make music. The first being that there are notes, right? Um, and everybody says, oh yeah, I've heard of notes before. Uh, but what does that mean, right? So a note is a, it represents a pitch, a, a certain vibration level of sound. And so we name notes in a couple of different ways. The one uh, that a lot of people are familiar with from the sound of music would be Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Right? So in there, there are seven names given for seven pitches. And uh, so that's kind of a starting point, but nobody actually uses that. You're not going to pick up a piece of paper and it's going to say, do, me, do, right? It's, uh, it's just not going to happen. So the other thing that we do is we assign them, and this is the most common thing, we assign them letter names, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Well, okay, that's only seven notes. Um, how can we have everything contain in seven notes? Because it repeats. So what we have is A through G, and then A through G again with a higher pitch, and you know A through G again with even a higher pitch. So that's how all of that is constructed. So now, uh, in these lessons, everything is going to be focused on reading a chord chart, not reading staff music, because I find that a lot of people have had piano lessons or something in their background, uh, and they understand, okay, I see a staff, and I see the dots on there, and I, I can kind of figure out if I can remember what the names are, I can figure out which one's which, and I can kind of play what's there. Uh, but a chord chart, you put that in front of you, it's got the words to the song, and it's got a couple of letters above the words, and there's a lot less uh, formal instructing on how it is to be played. So when you look at a chord chart, you're going to see those letters, the A through G. Sometimes they'll have a little M after them, sometimes they'll have a number after them, sometimes they'll have something like SUS after them. Um, but for the basics, all you need to know is that there are letter names for each note, for each pitch, we, and that they repeat. Uh, um, what we'll find then is that for each of those note names, A through G, there will be a chord or a group of chords associated with that note. Okay, the other thing that we want to talk about is that all of those notes, you don't just randomly play them, they are associated into what is called a key. So it is a grouping of notes or chords that sound good together. And so, uh, and those keys are based on a scale, and each key is going to have a name. Those names a, B, C, D, right? E same as the note names, each uh, key is going to have a uh, name and it aligns with that note name. And what it signifies is that the beginning of that key, the root note of that key, or if you're going to play the scale of that key, the first note is the named note. So if you say the key of C, the first note in the scale, the number one chord in the grouping is going to be C. It's going to be the root of that song. So 
we're going to talk a little bit about scales because the key defines the scale or the group of notes, the family of notes that you play in order to have the song sound good. And if you play a note that is outside that family, uh, it may be okay if you want that type of sound, but for the majority of it, if you play one, you're going to be like, oh, that was the wrong note. Right? And everybody's going to hear it, or at least you're going to hear it. I've found that a lot of times people don't hear the mistakes uh, that you hear when you're playing yourself, the things that you do, and you're like, oh, that was a mistake. And other people are like, oh, that sounded great. Uh, so again, that's part of being a hack at music, is understanding that even though you're making mistakes, not everybody is hearing them. Uh, so don't get yourself down about it. Just keep going. Uh, so we're going to talk about the scale and the key name. We are going to start with the key of C. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a guitar uh, scale and we're going to look at a piano scale and we're going to talk about uh, the steps that are between notes. So on a typical major scale, which is going to be 75% of worship music, you are going to have a root note, which is the name of the key, so C, uh, for this lesson. We're going to start with C, and we're going to go to D, right, because everything goes up. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then back to C for the next octave. So between C and D, we have a whole step. So what you're going to see on the piano is that there is a black key in between the C key and the D key. And on guitar, you're going to see that you're going to play a C on a fret, and then you're going to skip a whole fret section and go to the next so two frets up. That's skipping a whole step. It's just like having a black key, and you're not going to play the black key. You're going to skip over a fret area in order to play a D. So we have C, D, D to E is also a whole step. Okay, and then what we have is between E and F, you're going to have a half step. It's not easy to see on guitar, but on piano it's easy to see because if you look at the keyboard, you'll see that there's no black key there, right? So there is a half tonal step between E and F, always. So if we're looking at the guitar, we would go, okay, this is the E, and now instead of skipping a fret to play an F, we're just going to play the next fret, so a half step up, and that is an F. Then we're going to go to G, oh, back to another whole step, and we are going to have, uh, so we're going to skip a fret on the guitar, we're going to skip a black key. <coughs> we're going to skip a black key on a piano, and we're going to keep going. So between G and A, also, we have a whole step. Between A and B, we have a whole step. Between B and C, aha, we have a half step. So again, looking at the keyboard, it's the easiest place to see it. Between B and C, there is no black key. So between B and C, there is always a half step. And that's the reason we're starting with the key of C, is because it's easiest to picture it when you're looking at a piano. And hopefully that translates over a little bit to guitar as somebody is thinking about the progression. So again, in a scale, I shouldn't say again because I haven't said this yet. In a scale, you always start with one, you go through seven, and then you go back to one. And there are a series of whole steps and half steps that always occur in the same place. So between the first, second, third notes, you have a whole step. Between the third and the fourth note, you have a half step. Between four, five, six, and seventh notes, you have whole steps. And then between the seven note and going back to the one note, there is always a half step. This is for major keys. You always have that sequence of notes when you're playing the scale or in the family of notes that make up that key. Doesn't matter what key it is, it's always going to have that same progression. So for C, 
it's very easy for us, especially on piano, because we only play white notes. We start with the C, and we play C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And it's just nice and straight, and the half steps are already there. They're built in. There's no question about it. It's just there, and it's obvious. On guitar, it's a little bit trickier, and what we're going to learn is a pattern. So we're going to play the C note, we're going to play the D, and then we're going to change strings, and we're going to go to an E, and then right next to that is an F, we're not skipping anything there, and then we're going to skip again, we're going to play the G, and then we're going to go to the next string, play an A, skip, play a B, and then when we go to play the C again, you'll see that there is we're not going to skip a fret, we're just going to play the next fret. And I'm going to demonstrate all of this so that uh, you can see it. And I'm going to try and do it from the perspective that you would have if you were actually playing it. I've seen a lot of videos where people will play something and, and you're watching them play it and you're trying to look at their fingers, how they're moving on the guitar, and translate that to what you're trying to see when you're looking at the guitar or looking at the piano. Uh, and on piano videos, it, it tends to be a lot better. It's pretty typical that it's a normal point of view. Um, but on guitar, it always seems like you're facing the person. And that never had a problem for me doing that. But I have noticed trying to give lessons that some people are like, wait, which they're trying to move their finger, they're moving their hand in the same direction you did instead of reversing it for themselves. So I'm going to try and do all the guitar stuff uh, with a GoPro from my head so that it's exactly what it would be like if you were looking at your hands on the fretboard uh, and see it that way. Hopefully that will make a little more sense. Here we are. We're going to play the scale on guitar. We're going to start and find our C, which is the second string down. Third fret. So one, two, three. Third fret. That is a C. Right there, so we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. All right, let's go over that again, and we're going to talk about what's a whole step and what's a half step. So we start with C, second string down, third fret, C, and we want a whole step, so we're going to skip a fret, and we're going to play our D here, D, and we want another whole step, and we could go here and play that E, but instead we're going to drop down and play that E on the third string down, second fret in. So one, two, here's our E, and what we're doing is we're learning a pattern that's going to apply to all major scales. So we go one or C whole step D whole step E half step F because that's between our third note and our fourth note half step whole step G whole step A to play A we're going to go down another string so now we're on the fourth string second fret A whole step B half step back to C which is our root note, or our first note. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. We're going to play it again. This time we're going to use numbers, and there's a reason for this. We're going to use numbers for the notes instead of the names. We're going to start off with C being one. So we're going to go one whole step, two whole step, three, half step, four, whole step, five, whole step, six, whole step, seven, half step, back to one, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now we're going to look at why we are learning a pattern um, instead of just playing our scale like C, D, E, F, 
G, A, B, C, right? Because that's correct. But when we learn the pattern, it becomes useful to us in that we can start anywhere on these two strings and play that same pattern and we will be playing in a specific key. So, um, an, this would be an F, this would be a G. So if I was playing in the key of G, I can play that same pattern. And I know that I am going to be in the key playing the correct family of notes. Okay, so if that's a G, this would be an A. So if I'm in the key of A, I could play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. All right, and I'm going to be on the right notes for the key of A. Um, on the on the second string, we had C here, right? Well, what about a, a song that's in B, right? So we're going to go C, we're going to go B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay, always going to be the same. So we can play any scale that we want to by learning that pattern. Okay, let's play the C scale on piano. First, we're going to find C, right? And what you're going to look for is you have black keys and white keys, and it's black keys are two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. Okay, so anytime you see two black keys, the next white key is a C. So that is a C, that is a C, that is a C, and so on. So this is how it is going to repeat from low notes to high notes. So we're going to start with C, and we're going to play C to D. See there's a black key in between, so this is a whole step. C, whole step D, whole step E. There's no black key, so a half step F, whole step G, whole step A, whole step B, and then again, no black keys, so we have another half step going back to C. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, and C. Let's play it another time, and this time we're going to use numbers instead of the letters, and we're going to talk whole step and half step, which is pretty easy on the keyboard. So we're going to start off with C. One, whole step, two, whole step, three, half step, four, whole step, five, whole step, six, whole step, seven, half step, back to one. One, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I think this is a decent place to stop lesson one. If you are doing guitar, I would suggest that you practice the scale and learn the pattern. Um, once you feel like in C you can play the pattern pretty well, I would encourage you to move it around. Uh, try different starting points. Any starting point on the top two strings, so the lowest of the two strings, the lowest sounding of the two strings. And uh, if you're on piano, um, I would you could try it if you feel like you have a really good grasp of where the half steps and whole steps should be and how to count starting in one. You could try moving it around, remembering to when you need a half step to go to the black key, when you need a whole step, um, you know, white key to white key, or if you're on a black key and you need a whole step, you got to go to the next black key for most occasions. Um, it is a little more difficult to move around on the piano the initial concept of where the half step should be is easier because it's very visual, uh, but it's not as easy to just learn a pattern and then move it around like it is on guitar. For guitar, when you get bored, 
uh, with playing that C scale and then moving it around and still playing the same scale, I would say try improvising. Um, just stay within the notes that are in the scale, but don't play them in, in the scale order. Just mess around with them, um, particularly if you can play one, four, five, and then three, you know, just those, and then jump around a little bit. Um, and then you could try it in different keys as well. Uh, on piano, I would say do the same thing once you feel like you have the scale down. Um, then go ahead and, and improvise. Um, see if you can find a song in there somewhere, something that you recognize uh, and figure out where the notes are. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed the lesson, uh, please come back and try the others. Thank you.